This happened to be our year to develop a new strategic plan. And I don't think it could have happened at a better time. Certainly unexpected, but I think if we had done it last year, we would probably be revising it this year based on everything that's happened. My name is Patrick Rubel, your 2020 board president. So in my acceptance speech at the installation, which always occurs uh, early to mid-January, um, I talked about a couple of things looking forward. I talked about how we had the leadership in place to lead the organization. We had the staff in place to provide the services and support for our members. And we had the finances available to you know, meet our goals for the organization. Little did we know that a few weeks later, we'd be hit with a pandemic. And that changed everything. It changed how we deliver services to our members. It changed how realtors delivered services to their clients. Um, at the association, we were faced with um, the dilemma and a decision to make in terms of, you know, how do we continue to provide services to our clients in a safe way, in a safe manner? We made some pretty tough decisions about the office being open. We, we discontinued any in-person meetings with our members. The governor did let us know that we were considered an essential business. How could we deliver those services in a similar manner, but also in a safe manner? In May, uh, we had probably one of the most uh, horrific incidences that we've had to face as a community, uh, as an industry, as, and as individuals with the death of George Floyd here in Minneapolis. You know, we're kind of ground zero of the change in how we think about equity the change in how we, how we approach policing. We've done a number of things to address reconciliation and rebuilding after the civil unrest in May. The St. Paul Area Association of Realtors, along with the Minneapolis Area Realtors and the Minnesota Association of Realtors, banded together and formed a task force, a work group, called Realtors Rebuilding Community. Some of the things we've implemented were a uh, fundraiser, uh, which ended today, and it was a fundraiser that our goal was to raise $250,000. We've reached 96% of our goal at this point. We provided the opportunity for our committees to provide grants to community organizations that were impacted by the devastation, by the civil unrest. They each were able to provide $2,000 to uh, recipient or recipients of their choice that, uh, that needed the help. So it's really kind of been a, an incredible process to watch everybody come together around this goal of rebuilding the community. In addition to that, I think one of the things that we did this year, and, and we just approved it at committee and board level, was our inclusion statement. And I think that's really important right now that we acknowledge uh, the diversity, the changing face of, of not only our our state and our city, but also our members. So we now have a diversity, equity, and inclusion statement that I think we're all very proud of. This happened to be our year to develop a new strategic plan. And I don't think it could have happened at a better time. Certainly unexpected, but I think if we had done it last year, we would probably be revising it this year based on everything that's happened with regard to COVID-19 and social justice, social equity. We just completed our last strategic planning session today, and I'm very excited about what's coming out of that. Um, we're, we're going to be looking at you know, enhancing our educational opportunities through our community campus. We talked about our website. We talked about the diversity, equity, and inclusion statement and what that means. It has been an incredible year so far. It's not over. So we anticipate uh, great things coming up and everything that we've done, we've done together. The decisions that we've made, the discussions that we've had, it's been a team effort and I think that's what makes this successful.